Hey everybody, how's everybody doing? Welcome to my live today where we are talking about that pesky fear and how it can hold us back and I'm going to give you some little tips to actually get rid of it. So if you're here live, if you're able to be here live, just pop me a hey in the comments so I know that you're there. And if you're watching it on replay, just put hashtag replay and um, you can catch it up later on. So this week I have been running my Mindset Bootcamp, which it's been absolutely just fab. There have been so many mindset shifts that have happened this week, so many aha moments. And, you know, it's, it's just been absolutely fabulous. But I'm just genuinely, I'm still so, so genuinely shocked by how one thing can hold us all back from doing the things that we want to do. And that one thing has been fear. Fear is the biggest thing that holds people back from living the life that they actually want to lead. So, first of all, fear, as we know, fear is, is a basic human emotion, isn't it? It's, it's kind of been programmed into us. And, it, and it's supposed to have a beneficial purpose. It's supposed to signal to us that we, you know, there are is some some danger and, and we've got to prepare for something. Um, so, you know, for our survival. Um, so, you know, when we were cavemen, for instance, yeah, fear was a great thing, didn't it? Because, yeah, if a tiger's approaching you, you would, you know, you'd become fearful of it. Now, so when it's warranted, you know, fear can be a great resource for us. The problem now is that, you know, the media is manipulating fear now. It's become big business, hasn't it? You know, um, there's big head headlines stirring up fear. There's, you know, the politicians stir up fear for us. You know, and actually even as parents, we kind of wield fear um, just to keep our kids from misbehaving, don't we? So it's kind of woven into our, our fabric now and it affects us far more than it ever did with our caveman ancestors. Now, there's one thing that actually stops you moving forward and that's an illogical fear. An illogical fear usually follows the kind of that what if statement, you know, what if something happens? And that's what makes you worried and frantic and anxious. And that's what can actually hinder you in loads and loads of ways. And you know, and fear actually, it really influences the choices we, we make, you know. It's, it's, it's not great, it, it can either be good or it can be bad. So just pop a note in, in the comments now if you can, if anybody has actually, you know, if fear actually hinders them, if fear actually stops them actually moving forward. You just pop a, a, a note there in the comments if anybody has actually experienced the fear that stopped them moving forward. Because actually when we make kind of decisions that are motivated by fear, they're pretty dangerous for us. And it can actually lead to us, you know, it, or, or rather it won't ever lead to our, us le leading the life that we want to lead if we are making decisions that are governed by fear. Because fear actually tells us, you know, just to avoid all of any new situations or don't step into the unknown. You know, whereas fear used to only, uh, you know, uh, sort of appear in response to true, real threats to our survival. You know, we almost now have that alarm bell going off any time that we sort of dip our toe in our, you know, outside of our comfort zone. Because actually fear prefers us to stay in that familiar, comfy, cosy zone, even if it's pretty painful. You know, even if, um, you know, it's just by stepping into that, uh, uh, that unknown, it, it's really pain, it's painful for us. So what about if, for instance, you're in a dead end job? You know, it would rather keep us in that dead end job rather than stepping out into our comfort zone because it's stepping out into the unknown. Fear also stops us expanding who we are. You know, it tells us not to smile at strangers or speak our opinions too loudly. So instead of pushing our boundaries, fear actually encourages us 
to avoid any potential failure or rejection. You know, how many people have got that, you know, that dream, that desire to write their own book or, you know, ask that person for that date or to apply for that promotion? You know, if it was up to fear, we'd basically hide in our beds and just not grow into who we really could be. You know, fear can actually stop us from achieving all our goals and living our best lives. You know, it can actually stagnate us. You know, so whether it's that fear of public speaking or pursuing that enormous dream, you know, or whether it's just that fear of failure or of what others might think of them. I know within the group this week, that was one of the biggest fears that came up. You know, what will someone else think of me? You know, or what about of not pursuing the career that you really want to? It's not actually the fear that's holding you back. It's actually the made up story that you are continually telling yourself about the fear, fear that's really stealing your happiness. Fear itself, of course, is, is normal, isn't it? You know, when you set out to pursue your deepest desires and live that big, bold life, it's completely normal for fear to start creeping in and to scare us. But what makes all the difference is our reaction to it and our response to that fear. You know, are we going to let it stop us doing what we want to do? There have been many, many times in my life where fear has, or I've let fear hold me back, you know, and it stopped me pursuing opportunities so many times. Like, you know, when, you know, I didn't start my own business for three years, three whole years, because of, you know, the fear of actually setting up something on my own. You know, fear has attacked me from all different sides. You know, I let it get the best out of me and I let it dominate you know, my thoughts and my beliefs and my, the actions that I, I took. Now, fortunately for me, given my training and knowing how the mind works, I've been able to overcome these challenges. So where fear, you know, was the main driver, it's not anymore. Now, I still can get scared. Fear still creeps into my life, you know, sometimes on a daily basis, multiple times through the day sometimes. The only difference now is I actually use that fear to drive me forward. I know, now know how to never let fear get to me and stop me living the life that I want to lead. Because I don't believe in a life of fear. You know, anything can happen at any moment, can't it? But it's a wasted life if we fear stepping into the unknown, to not participate in things that we actually really enjoy doing simply because something might happen. So here are my ways that will help you to never let fear hold you back again. Who would be interested in that? Pop up in the comments there, who's interested in knowing some little tips that could help you never let fear take hold of you again? First one, the first one is do a comparison exercise. You know, write down what's the worst thing that could actually happen. And, you know, would it really be the end of your life? And then write down, well, what's the best thing that could happen? And just compare the two. And what's the most scary then between them? You know, actually staying stuck where you are or actually pursuing your dreams. Next one is just have a look at that worst case scenario. You know, when you think about what's the worst thing that could actually happen, how likely do you think that it could actually happen? How likely do you think that worst case scenario could ha happen? I want you to realise that actually it's very unlikely to happen. Very unlikely. And actually a way to sort of deal with that anyway is thinking about what can you do to prepare in advance for that sort of worst case scenario or for things possibly going wrong. So if you're doing a presentation, for instance, you know, maybe someone asking you questions makes you fit, you know, full of fear and anxious. 
um, or if your timings go wrong. So think about all the things that potentially could happen and prepare for them. You know, what would you do if they did happen? And have your answer ready before you even do it. Now I want you to play the positive what if game. So you've, you've originally started with the negative what if game. You know, what if this happens? What if that happens? I now want you to flip that on its head and think about the positives. So what if the best actually happened? You know, if the best scenario happened, how's that going to affect my life? What am I losing out on by not pursuing, you know, what I really want to do by not pursuing that chance? And then what I want you to do is feel the fear and do it anyway. Fear can really only win and get the best out of you if you allow it to. You know, if you allow it to by not taking the action and pushing yourself forward. Do you really want fear to get the better of you? So face your fears head on. Do something that scares you every single day. Your self-confidence will soar. So just get yourself out of your comfort zone. And remember here that you don't need to have everything sussed out. You know, the first step is to just take some action towards that goal. And the more and more you do it, the more you practice doing it, the better that you will become. And that will also raise your self-confidence. I also want you to connect to your desires, connect to your goal and your vision. Because actually, if you really want to do something, you will move mountains to do it. So there are just, you know, there might be some things that you have to do to achieve your goal. So just get on and do them. I want you to also think about changing your view of failure. You know, one of the biggest fears stopping us doing what we want to do is that fear of failure. You know, so I want you to now think of failure in a different way altogether. Just view the failure as just a learning opportunity and it's there to mould you into the person that you want to become. So see it as a blessing in disguise as, you know, as maybe you just didn't know everything that you need to know. And then I want you to challenge your fearful thoughts. Just challenge it. So what story is it that you're telling yourself when you get fearful? Because we can really over-exaggerate things. So I want you to just ask yourself, what's around you that currently contradicts that thought? You know, and then is there an action that you can take if this situation were to occur? And then just realise when you look at it, you know, is this thought re you know, fear based? Are you completely catastrophizing something? Are you blowing it out of all proportion? So really challenge your thoughts that you've got about it. And then I want you to ask yourself, what are you putting off through fear? Usually the fear the one thing, the very thing that we fear the most is the very thing that we have to do. So whether it's that phone call that we don't want to do, you know, that booking or that email, that report, or just that conversation, whatever that action might be, it's the fear of the unknown outcome that prevents us from doing it. So just define the worst case Accept it and just do it. Just really take on that very thing that you are fearing the most. And finally, and this is the biggie, this is the massive one now. What is it costing you? What is fear costing you? What are the consequences to you? So your life, your finances, your relationships, your career, by not taking this action. Don't underestimate the effects that this inaction can have on your life. If you don't pursue those things that excite you, that you desire, where are you going to be in one year, in three years, in five years and ten years? Now compare this with how your life would look like if you did take the action. And now what's the most scary? I want you to take the decision today 
that fear is not an option for you. Now, if you still have fear that persists and keeps on sort of really wrecking your life, so, you know, causing you anxiety and, you know, got a real hold on your life, then you need to get some help to release it. Fear is that chronic, you know, that's, that's um, really sort of unwarranted and really quite chronic, you know, stems from a previous root cause. And that's usually deep at the unconscious level. So as an NLP and timeline therapy trainer, I use a technique called timeline therapy to get rid of negative emotions, including inappropriate fear, to allow you to move forward and make empowered decisions. So drop me a message and I can tell you more about how I can help. And just remember that I've actually got a one day NLP skills workshop on January the 25th. And if you book by tomorrow, the 6th of December, there's a £100 off. So it's a huge discount if you book up for by tomorrow. So drop me a message if you are interested. And, you know, I want you to take that decision today. Take that decision that fear's not going to have a hold on you anymore. Have a wonderful day, everybody. And see you again next week.